Hey guys, welcome back to some more Williams Road to Glory here today and this is the Italian Grand Prix, the last European round of the season before we get into the final flyaway races of the year and this one is going to be quite exciting because it's a power circuit and ultimately we've got some good engine power with the Mercedes power unit in the back of our car so it should be a decent weekend for us and fingers crossed we can try and compete with the big boys but first of all as always I've got to get the plug out of the way if you missed the previous episode episode at spa i'll leave that linked up in the top right hand corner of your screen but guys also we are so close to 60k subs now i believe we're on 59.7 so hopefully we'll get there in the next couple of days so any help would be massively appreciated so if you haven't done so already hit the red subscribe button if you're new to my channel and yeah without further ado let's jump into it and let's see how the video goes and if you enjoy it leave a like and uh, yeah let's see what happens in monza now first off we look at the weather forecast and this weekend it looks like we've got no rain expected. We then jump into the R&D progression chart and again for this race we have no upgrades like most of the teams in the area that we're in. It looks like Racing Point have brought an upgrade this weekend but in general there's no big change in the midfield and we've got two big upgrades on the way. We've got a major aerodynamic one and a minor chassis one. If they both arrive we should potentially jump into the top half of the table in terms of the performance. So there's a lot of reasons to feel excited about you know where we're going and we could end the season very very strongly with a very good car but nonetheless after practice we had a pretty straightforward session we scored nearly 800 points a, a decent session for us uh, taking our total up to 1563 and hopefully after the race we should be pretty much level 14 in terms of driver acclaim now we moved to qualifying q1 specifically here at monza and as you guys know power circuit so important to be good on the straights but also maintain a good kind of minimum speed performance through the corners now for this one i was using one of my league racing setups and it seems like because these cars are getting quite fast now with upgrades there was actually a certain instability with the car that i was struggling to kind of you know contain let's say and the car was quite nervous i did make some adjustments on the setup before qualifying and it did make it a bit better compared to practice but the car was still on the knife edge which means you know one mistake and you could be in trouble also if you hook it all up you're going to be pretty quick now in q1 you can see this is my bank lap we go p5 at the time and uh, 117.2 from what i can tell on my previous screen there and uh, that would be enough to see us into q2 along with george russell so both cars out of q1 uh, russell setting a 17.2 so some good pace from us so far and uh, we're both into q2 quite comfortably speaking of q2 you can see through here now this time this is what i was referring to uh, before regarding the poor balance so you saw through one and two just losing the back end massively through there and losing a big big chunk of time and then now down towards turns four and five uh, the variante i believe uh retrofilio i might be wrong um over the curbs the car just wasn't want to work and um, it, the, the stability was all over the place the oversteer was crazy and yeah overall the lap was just quite scruffy again for the lesmo there just losing the balance a little bit eventually we finished the lap and it was a pretty poor one in terms of pace yeah i can't lie that it was a long way off we actually set a 17.5 which is three tenths slower than the q1 time so i know there's a lot more time to find so we're going to go for a full lap of monza and this was my final chance to get through we're currently p15 so we need this lap so here we are then down towards turn number one you want to spot the 100 meter board down to third gear and keep it in third aggressive over that first curb and then stay off the second one completely important through here to get some nice clean traction and we are already half a second up which is great so a perfect start to the lap and a very very good first sector we're now heading to turn four and five break at the 100 down to fourth gear again attack the inside through the left and the right and use all the runoff exit curb as we then go down towards lesmo one Fifth gear corner, try and pick up a bit of a late apex and focus on your exit. Then Lesmo number two, a couple of downshifts again. We actually went a little bit wide there, just about keeping it uh, within track limits, but we're just over a second up. So this is a very, very good lap from us and uh, much better than anything we've done so far this weekend. Into Ascari, full commitment there, all over the curbs, just giving absolutely everything through here. I actually lose a little bit of time um, through there because I took a bit too much of a short, narrow line through the right-hander and it kind of compromised my exit but now towards parabolica here breaking at the 50 meter board fifth gear corner just slightly missing the apex there but we managed to recover keeping the car nice and tight to the right hand side for the shortest run to the line and we're going to improve by pretty much a full second and move up into the top three with a big big lap of one minute 16.6 
very much a statement lap as we finish Q2 in third place, actually. So we got through comfortably. The pace of the car is great. Unfortunately, George is out in P15, and he went slower in Q2 than he did in Q1, which is a bit of a shame. And with his Q1 time, I think he would have got um, P14, I think. But nonetheless, we moved to Q3 now, and this was my first lap of the session. Currently two tenths up on Alex Albon as we head for Ascari. I make a bit of a meal of it. It take a bit too much inside curb through there, lose the back end, and go for a cheeky little Zbinala. And uh, that's going to be the end of our first time lap in this session. We only have one more fresh set of soft tyres available to us. So we're going to have to pretty much deliver on the final lap. And again, you're seeing the kind of knife edge of the setup here. You know, compared to Q2, I just make a mistake and it cost me time. But nonetheless, let's go for a full lap of Monza. We're currently P10. Let's see what we can do. And we're going to go for a full lap of Monza here for the Italian Grand Prix. We are then running up to the line. It's going to be a good lap from us, but how good is it really? As we cross the line, it is going to be a 116.3, my best lap of the weekend, and we finish in third place. So a great qualifying here today and delivering when it really, really matters. And the car actually working quite well in that final run. I managed to hook it all up without any major errors and just extracting maximum performance from the car. Both Mercs on the front row. Ocon is going to be alongside us in P4. Leclerc, the only Ferrari actually in Q3, which is quite a surprise. And uh, Lander also the only McLaren in the top 10 as well. So there's a lot. Crucially worth noting, Verstappen P9, which is massive for the championship. So it's going to be interesting, this race, and I can't wait for it. In terms of the rivalry, Bottas does pick up an extra point and outscore us. And uh, we're also going to gain a little bit of a claim, but hopefully we can try and have a good race and crucially outscore our title rival. So let's jump into it and let's see if we can cause some trouble to the Mercedes cars. We're back in Italy once again for another round of the Formula One World Championship. And what a great race is in store for us today here at the oldest circuit on the calendar. Monza hosted its first race all the way back in 1922. With top speeds up to 215 miles per hour and an average lap speed of around 155 miles per hour, Monza's reputation as one of the fastest circuits in the sport is well earned. We have 11 corners on this 3.6 mile track with the best overtaking chance coming into the heavy braking zone of the Turn 1 chicane. With me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. I want to ask you about Nobuharu Matsushita. As ever, the threat of unreliability is never far away, and indeed they'll be starting out of position today due to a power unit component change. So it's going to be a difficult task to move forward from there. Everyone has to deal with penalties or reliability issues from time to time throughout their career. You just have to suck up the pain and get on with the job at hand. Today isn't about performing a miracle to put the car back where it should be. It's about effective damage limitation. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Martinez completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Ocon, Leclerc, Daniel Ricciardo and Albon. Bottas, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Fiat, Verstappen and Sebastian Vettel. Sainz, Perez, Pierre Gasly and Russell. Stroll, Giovinazzi, Kevin Magnussen and Roman Grosjean. Norris and Nobuharu Matsushita. 
it's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. The big news heading into the race, Valtteri Bottas has a grid penalty. So we start on the front row alongside championship leader Lewis Hamilton. So we've got a massive opportunity here today to close the gap and potentially not maybe beat Lewis, but we can definitely gain some points on Max and Valtteri, who I believe is P4 on the championship. We're P3 by a point. So there's a big chance here, but if we can win this race, that would be incredible. And that's what I'm going to try and do here today. Strategy wise, Soft to hard tyre, possibly soft to medium. It depends how my soft tyres hold up. If I can squeeze an extra lap, I'm going to try and go for the mediums because I'm pretty sure it's not impossible to go for the medium tyre. So there you go. Um, yeah, we're definitely going to try and go for the option if we can. Anyway, the plan is simple. Try and get Hamilton on track and keep the lead, if not pull away. And if we can win this race, heading into the next race, which is Singapore, which is my strongest track of the entire season, this could really help just, you know, leapfrog and just give us the launching pad we need for the title challenge. So let's jump into it and let's get the Italian Grand Prix underway. Right, this is it. Let's get the RPMs right into that sweet spot. Lights out and away we go. That's not a bad start. It's not great, but it's definitely not bad. I've had a lot worse than that. Down towards turn one we go. Uh-oh, I don't like the look of this. I think we're 3-1. I'm going to take a big old chunk of inside kerb there to avoid contact. Both Alpines, though, getting off to an absolute flyer. Ricardo and Ocon. Hamilton's already disappearing out front. But the Alpines getting off to an absolute flyer here in this race already. And we're down a P4. Not able to convert my front row into anything positive, And we end up losing ground. It seems like my starts are just really poor at the moment. Uh, I almost feel like Tim at Madu, to be fair, in many ways. It just can't seem to get a good start. So we'll try and uh, work on that. Shout out to Ben, of course. Love you, bro. But uh, yeah, we need to work on our race stars, I think. On the way, we're down to P4. This is not what I had in mind. So we've got work to do. First and foremost, we need to get past the Alpines. We've got Bottas, you can see, in P6. So he's lurking. He's not too far back. I think he had a far place group penalty rather than a 10. So that means a gearbox change. But yeah, we're going to have to try and uh, get past these Alpine cars. So Ricardo's first up. I wonder if I can now the Parabolica, could I get him maybe? We're about to find out. Maybe not. That lockup's not going to help proceedings one bit. Car still feels on edge, like qualifying, very similar. You know, just losing the balance, not really feeling that confident right now. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to just be a bit of a patient, maybe wait for the DRS to go for a move on Danny Rick. Unless Ricardo goes for one of his teammate, that would really help things out. Well, Hamilton's absolutely flying. He is looking good to win this race already, to be honest with you. DRS now enabled though, so let's see what happens with the Alpines up ahead. Right, let's see if Ricardo goes for the move on his teammate here. I'm just going to try and stay close. Yeah, it looks like it's going to happen. So Ricardo will take P2 from Ocon quite easily, actually. I'm not really close enough to kind of capitalize. Ricardo locks up though, as we take our usual line through there. Unfortunately, I just lost the momentum. I had to slow off the, the accelerator and just kind of back off a little bit. Otherwise, I would have lost my front wing. So I couldn't quite get Ocon there or get the drive out the corner, but we're going to keep the pressure on here. Already I can tell I'm a lot quicker. Seems like Hamilton hasn't raced away as much as I thought. It seems like maybe he's holding something back on pace. He's not that far away. So if we can clear these cars relatively quickly, we can try something here. But right now it seems like they're kind of working in tandem with the DRS and I can't quite get the exit I need out of the crucial traction zones. It seems like we are very fast on the straight, but I need to be super close otherwise the engine will start to overheat i'm trying to man manage my temperatures a little bit so for front row 120 that's kind of dangerous territory as it is already any more than that and you're going to overheat straight away so yeah i'm just trying to stay close right now hopefully this could be the one here we're going to use a bit of vrs to try and close up to ocon here into parabolica let's see if i can just keep it tidy through here that's a good enough exit for me do i drain the battery here for this move we're about to find out engines already on 122 we're going to go for it. The RS wide open. Carrying the overspeed. We're going to get the run of a car, but we get boxed in. The Alpine's doing a good job of keeping me behind for now. They're still going at it here. Ah, the tra traction out there was terrible. And that's such a shame. I used so much ERS there to try and get the move done. Just got boxed in. I chose the wrong side. This is a great little scrap, scrap though between you know us and the Alpine team of course who seem to be really fast around here. Okay, Ocon's gonna re-overtake Ricardo now, so another little swap from the Alpine cars in terms of position. 
Let's see if we can try and get past Ricardo. I'm assuming Ricardo won't have much ERS, to be honest with you. He would have been pulling Archon along. Do I want to go for this right now? No, I don't. I just I can tell when the AI switched to overtake on, and they're quite speedy in terms of straight line speed. But I've got so much more pace right now. Just waiting to try and at least if I can just split them, that's it. It's game over. I, I can I can clear them, but I need to get one of them. But I'm struggling through here, and because I can't quite get the grip, I can't challenge them on the straights right now. I'm struggling out of all the key traction areas, and that's where the Williams is just letting me down a bit. I wonder if the Alpines are going to switch around again this lap. They're pretty close. And Ocon's actually going to squeeze Ricardo here. I've got Leclerc and Bottas right behind me now, so this could be an opening. That's better. This time I managed to get the gap. The rear traction is non-existent, though. This could not get the rear tires to work through there. In the slipstream of Ocon, we're going to pull to the right-hand side, using the rest of my ERS to try and get this moved on. Ocon's going to try and outbreak me if we go the long way around here. I need to get that DRS on Ricardo. I can't afford to let him get away or break away. That's the worst case scenario possible. Oh, back end is not working though. We've just held on to the DRS though, but the rear tyres are not working with me. Let's see if we can catch back up to Daniel here using the ERS that we have left. Yeah, it's ain't good engine start to overheat. Luckily though, we have got past one of the Alpines, so... Let's try and get Ricardo now, if we can, before the pit stop phase. Leclerc, Ocon and Bottas are all battling behind, so this is our scheduled pit stop lap. Looking at my tyre wear, I'm going to definitely try and squeeze on the medium, so we're going to go for two more laps. Right, some information on Ricardo. They're slowing down. It seems like there's some kind of problem with their car. Okay, that's good news for us. Ricardo's got issues. Him and Hamilton pit. Let's see then. We're going to hopefully try and overcut them. Hamilton goes for the hard tyre. Okay, so Ocon stays out, so does Leclerc. Bottas pits. We're going to pit this lap now for the mediums, and that's going to be hopefully our chance to try and do something in this race. Right, we're going to pit this lap then. Let's see how this goes. Through the power breaker. One last time on these tyres, which are absolutely finished, by the way. Into the pit lane. Nicely done. Okay, the class stays out, that's interesting, but we're going to box and get these tyres off. 68% left rear, really struggling on that tyre. Right, we need a quick stop here just to keep us ahead of Ocon, preferably. Let's see if the boys deliver. Here we go. Right, that'll do, 2.4. And we're out ahead of Ocon. On mediums now, Hamilton's on the hard tyre. Where is Ricardo? Oh, Ricardo's nowhere. Ricardo is nowhere to be seen, and looks like we're going to be out just ahead of Magnussen and Grosjean by the looks of it, so that's going to split me and Ocon off. Right, that is crucial, absolutely critical. Bottas also a bit further back as well, so the undercut hasn't worked for Bottas or Ricardo, so we are still net P2, but we've now got a tire advantage over Hamilton in P1, so... This is a big moment of the race now. Now we've got to try and see if we can use these tyres to our advantage. Charles Leclerc in the pit lane for Ferrari. Onto the mediums for him as well. So he's going to join us on that strategy. He's leaving the pair exit now. So it's going to be close. But crucially we're still ahead. But Leclerc is going to be P3. So he's managed to overcut and get himself into the race as well. Ocon's lost a lot of time stuck in traffic. So there's now one Ferrari in the podium positions. But crucially we're looking good for P2 now. And we are faster than Lewis currently. We are catching him. So this is good pace from us. This is a big lap from us. This should be a personal best. Will it be a fastest lap? I'm going to use all of my ERS running up to the line here. And there we go. 19.5. New fastest lap of the Grand Prix. And we get a warning for track limits. I believe I actually ran off the track there. I was too focused on my ERS. Either way. We're closing in on Hamilton now. Making great progress. Let's see if we can try and keep this tire alive though. By the time we catch up to try and pass him. Okay, Bottas takes away my fastest lap. So there goes that extra point, but that's okay. Doesn't really matter too much. I'm focused on Hamilton now. And we're getting closer. I'm just trying to keep an eye on my fuel and DRS, which I'm running quite low on, to be honest. Okay, we've now got DRS on Hamilton here. I'm just trying to save a little bit of fuel and ERS for an overtake attempt. Meanwhile, Bottas battling with Leclerc currently for P3. I've got to say, Hamilton's pace is pretty insane. Like, there's no... I can't see any weakness. I don't know where I'm going to pass him. He's so good out of every single traction zone. 
Bottas is flying. He's catching up here, but I just don't know where I'm going to pass Lewis. I don't see a, a place where I can definitely identify a weakness from him. I'm just going to have to basically just drain my ERS on a certain straight and just hope for the best. So I'm going to start working on closing the gap now. We've managed to just charge the battery up to a decent amount and then keep a bit of fuel back. So I need to make this move now because we're starting to hit the crossover point on the tyre wear and those hard tyres will start to come into their own now. So we need to start making this move now. Pretty close through here. Could I maybe get the move on Hamilton possibly? Or is this straight not long enough? We're catching. I don't think we're close enough though. The straight is going to run out. So we'll just use this one to kind of close the gap a little bit. The back end feels so loose, man. I've got no confidence in the rears whatsoever. I think we might pass Hamilton, but it's a different story trying to stay ahead. I think he's going to be with us for the rest of the race now. But I don't even know I'm going to pass him. I'm really just... I'm poor in every single key traction zone where there's DRS enabled, basically. I'm going to send it here. I'm going to drain the battery and see what happens. It's going to be a Hail Mary for the race win. Here we go, into the first corner. Oh man, that's not gone well. Just going to take it easy through there. Went a bit too slow. Going to drop out of the RS now from Hamilton. I need to use what I have to get back in. I've used all my fuel on the RS by doing that. So there goes my attempt. Completely I broke myself there. Not ideal. No, I'm really struggling with the grip now. Tire wear isn't even that bad. I'm just, I've got no confidence in the back end. Similar to qualifying, the rear end confidence just isn't there right now. Bottas has dropped off, he's trying for pace now, Ocon's actually trying to challenge him. I'm keeping with Lewis here, but I'm waiting for the last two laps when the AI go for their absolute just flat out um, push attempt. So I just can't see it happening, I don't know where I'm going to pass him. I'm pretty close here actually. I'm going to go for this, I'm going to use everything I have and go into the negative. Look at the speed difference we have. Hamilton quite slow through there. Oh, I'm really struggling for any grip right now. But I wonder what happened to Hamilton there. He was so slow on the straight. Maybe he's finally run out of ERS because he was so fast every single lap. You know, he was just pulling away all the time. But we're not out of trouble just yet. Just when I thought it was all over and I could have actually... Well, I wasn't going to get the overtake done. Suddenly, we've done it. And look at Hamilton now. He can't even get past me now. It seems like he might be out of VRS. I mean, I'm out as well. I'm, I've got nothing left in the tank. I'm going to try and stand the line here. And try and hold on. Two laps to go, but we may have a chance here to actually pull away. Hamilton seems to have nothing left in the reserves. This might be my chance to pull away here. Yeah, Hamilton looks slow on the straight. Look at the delta. He's just dropping like a stone. He's out of VRS. Ooh. Ricardo's out, but again, it's a bit late in the race now, so there's no safety car or virtual safety car. Yeah, look at the Delta. Even with DRS, Hamilton can't keep up when I use overtake. He's out of energy. This could be the opening we need for the race win. Just trying to hang on to the car now, make no mistakes. The rear end is terrible. I've got no confidence whatsoever. The left rear is 62%. Here comes Hamilton for the final time. Entering a yellow flag zone. Surely he can't pass. Going to break very early just to set up this exit nicely. Verstappen takes the fastest lap. Seems like Hamilton's found a bit of energy for this last lap, so it's not over yet. Hamilton's approaching like a cruise missile, but she's not going to be close enough. He seems to have found a bit of energy as Gazi takes the fastest lap. Bottas is now down to P5. Here comes Hamilton, though. He's got a bit more energy from somewhere. We're going to have to use everything we have and deplete the reserves into Parabolica. We're going to just hold the inside line. Try and make sure the traction's on point out of there. Hamilton's going to try. It's going to be a race to the line, but I think we've got it. And we're going to win at Monza. Come on. of the clear air today then and didn't allow anyone to exploit the slipstream behind them. What a great win here at Monza. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. 
It looks like it's time once again to hand out the silverware as these successful drivers make their way to the podium. It was a gritty performance today by Williams, and they've got the race win to prove it. There we go, a massive result in the championship fight here today. We pick up the W in Monza and we snatch it off Lewis Hamilton. I didn't expect it, I honestly could not see a chance. Hamilton's pace was so relentless and I, I honestly gave up once we had that one chance. But it seems like right at the end, all that pushing and flat out every lap from Hamilton, he ran out of VRS and you could see uh, the speed difference we had and out of nowhere we suddenly had a chance. Leclerc gets on the podium for Ferrari in their home race, a great drive from Charles Leclerc, Bottas P4 ahead of Ocon, Verstappen P6 with the fastest lap so salvaging the race somewhat from P9 on the grid, Lando and Carlos in the points from McLaren, what a turnaround from uh, Lando Norris from P19 to P7, Albon and Vettel running out the top 10, missing out on the points, Perez, Russell, Kofi, at Giovinazzi, Grosjean, Matsushita, Stroll, Magnussen, Gasly and Ricardo who retired right at the end. And in terms of what that race means for the championship, we are still third but the gap to the lead is just 21 points. And as you guys know, the next race is Singapore. It's massive and we've got a huge opportunity here to really close the gap and make this a serious title charge heading into the final few races of the season. Constructors wise, we're still in third, but we increased the gap to Alpha Terry to 65 points now, and we have some decent breathing room. So guys, that's it for the race at Monza. Let's move into the upgrades. Okay, after the race, we outscore Bottas by a point, which is great news for us. So we managed to pull one back in the rivalry and keep the gap to two points as we approach the halfway stage. In terms of driver acclaim, thanks to that race win, we are going to level up to level 14. So again, making more progress there as well. Now we have over 2000 R&D points to spend. The major aerodynamic upgrade we had planned has arrived just right now. So we've already got a major rear aero upgrade on the car. We've got another one for the chassis on the 12th and we've got 10 days until the next race. So we are gonna go ahead and purchase some more upgrades and Looking at the chassis, I'm gonna go for another one. It's gonna be for the tire wear. And I am gonna rush it. I'm gonna try and see if we can get this on the car before the next race and hope that we get lucky. So as it stands, we've got two chassis upgrades in the way. Both are minor. So let's see if that arrives as we skip ahead to the Singapore Grand Prix. Unfortunately, it did fail. I took a risk. I knew it probably wasn't going to work. So we're gonna just go ahead and purchase it standard. It will arrive before the next race in Russia. So that's something anyway. And fingers crossed we can maybe add one more upgrade onto the car before the Russian Grand Prix. But we are starting to get a bit limited now by what the team have. You can see we've got question marks around the engine, the chassis and the aero because we're starting to run out of upgrades. We need the team to level up the fabrication which in many departments is still level 1. Especially chassis and aerodynamics are still level 1. We need that to improve. So hopefully Williams can work on some fabrication upgrades. But for now... Not complaining, the upgrades are coming in, the car's getting faster. So uh, let's skip ahead to Singapore and uh, see how it goes. But guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, leave a like, subscribe for more. Let's try and hit over a thousand likes on this video. And once again, we're so close to 60,000 subs, guys. Any help would be massively appreciated. As always, a big thank you to the members of the channel and a shout out to you guys for supporting. I really, really appreciate it. And as always, guys, check out the two videos on screen and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, take care and it's goodbye from me.